Okay, I'm here with uh, Andy Simington, who's the uh, director of uh, Mountain Base in Chamonix. Uh, Andy, welcome. Hi. There. Nice to be. Uh, nice to be on the recording. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, let us know a little bit about where you are, uh, what you do, what you provide, and a little bit of a bit of history. That would be great to. Okay. Introduce. Um, well, right now I'm sat in our in our Lozouche office. You can uh, see the mountains in the background. Uh, we. Uh, we have two offices in, in the Chamonix Valley, the main one being in, in Chamonix Centre. Um, the rest of the team are manning there for the moment. Um, I've been here, uh, well, it'll be 20 years this, uh, this August, uh, which is when we, we set up Mountain Base uh, with my business partner, Matt, and, and my wife, who's also called Andy. Um, keeps it easy. Um, wow. And I've been running, running this business ever Ever since um, we started with, uh, well, running a catered chalet, actually. Uh, no way, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We sort of gave gave up the corporate career and um, and came over to run a, run a catered chalet. I mean, in Chamonix. In Chamonix. That's if you're amazing. old enough, Mark, to remember, uh, which it may be. Uh, I'm, no I'm, 40, I'm 46, so oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely, definitely remember. Um, now, going back on Channel 4, it's a series of um, people who are sort of giving up their lives in the UK and coming over to, to I don't know, run an olive farm in, um, in Tuscany or, uh, well, one of them was a, was a catered chalet in, in, in Chamonix. Um, the, the guys who were in it are actually good friends now. Um, and I think the thinking was at the time, if, if those idiots can do it, and he won't mind me saying that, um, anyone can. So that was, that was the plan. That's a brilliant um, story. And, and as much as it was a plan, it wasn't really a plan. Um, so we, yeah, we came over, started that, um, and um, started to started to look after some rentals for other people. Yeah. Um, as, as a management company, um, but then it became clear that actually Matt, Matt and myself were RICS chartered surveyors um, in our, in our London days, and for me, Edinburgh after that. Um, and we we managed to get our RICS qualification converted to the Cup Professionnel uh, equivalent in 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 France in 2007, and then wow. headed off on the on the sales route at that point, um, and and sort of split the business. <clears throat> Matt yeah. and I carrying on with the sales, and and Andy uh, looking after the the, the, the rentals team. Um, you can't you can't do this anymore. Th thanks to Brexit, of course, uh, they don't recognise um, the UK qualifications. But um, wow. yeah, that's where we are. We're just growing and growing from from those early days of um, you know, doing the doing the meals, doing the doing the runs to the ski slopes, and um, you know having a lot of fun with the guests. And was was that your first time to Chamonix? Then what was was, was it wasn't. That... I mean, I've been I've, people ask why why did you move to Chamonix? I think I give a different answer every time. Um, it's uh, it was predominantly a change of lifestyle. Yeah, that's what it was. Um, yeah, yeah. I was working for Royal Bank of Scotland, and the corporate stuff isn't my forte, it has to be said. Yeah, um, but that that must be that must be a familiar story for a lot of people that are buying in Chamonix that they 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 are looking for that change in, uh, of lifestyle and you can kind yeah, of I think it's it. gone in I think it's gone in waves. Um, that era twenty years ago was the was the era of the catered chalet. Um, yes. Yeah. People... Well, I, I used just a quick uh, segue. I used to work for a company called. Uh, well, catered ski chalets, interactive resorts, and we used to. Uh, I think it was. Theo Morgan's dad that pretty much um, started the whole catered ski chalet process, which was, I, I imagine, probably 30 years ago, something along those lines. It's quite, it's quite a British thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, it does exist. I, I'm, st I'm still a fan of it, to be fair, but I know it's kind of uh, uh, a lot a lot less people are doing it. It's hard to define that, that process. But for me, it's such an easy time, especially with the family that um, yeah. you have someone that kind of looks after that whole whole process for you. I, I love it. Oh, it was absolutely great concept. And uh, uh, that, that era was moving away from the, you know, box of wine on top of the uh, kitchen cupboard and spag bowl uh, or a yeah. chili every yeah. night, um, you yeah, know, run by um, 
um, some people on a gap year um, yeah. with a bit of cash in the hand and a ski pass. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, five of them sat in a studio that really shouldn't be habitable. Um, to to that era, which was which was us, you know, people who have had yeah. careers um, were, were buying the chalets um, and, and running a business. Um, yeah. But that's all. That's all but gone. It's you know, it's faced some faced some challenges over the years. It, it exists with the big companies like I think Nielsen's still doing Crystal and yeah, yeah, all these yeah. guys. But uh, the private individual, certainly in this valley, uh, and, and I think Chamonix was was quite a leader in it originally because yeah. it's so accessible. Um, yeah. and, and you know, the catering uh, model went from Saturday to Saturday classic weeks with Wednesday. Yeah, on, yeah, I remember. After, Three or four nights, you know, not a box of wine anymore. Some really good, good food, uh, good service, good good wine, um, yeah. and 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 evolved and evolved. But the challenges of doing it these days are, are, are complicated. Yeah, yeah I understand. You know, um, I'm just going to pick up on your point that you said about. I find this really interesting with Chamonix. As I said to you earlier, I did a ski season in Chamonix when I was a little bit younger, probably over 20 years ago. That's a bit scary. Um, but in terms of the accessibility, we know how accessible Chamonix is to Geneva. Yeah. But as a ski resort, so the balance is really interesting for me. So, so many people want to invest in Chamonix or be part of it, be in Chamonix. But what do you say to people? Because obviously you have the area of Bravant Flegier, the Grand Monte, Le Tour. It's really kind of spaced out, isn't it? So it's not like you're going to find all these ski in, ski out chalets and every one leads to back to your home. What kind of people or buyers do you find or how do you, how do you, do you even uh, advise buyers in terms of if they want the ski and ski out that it isn't for them? What what's what do you think the general appeal is? Uh, my, my first response to all that, as ever, is Chamonix is not a ski resort. Yeah, um, it's a town. It's yeah. a town in the Alps that happens to have ski areas in the valley. Um, you know, I uh, Try, try to be honest with everybody. If, you, if you're used to the three valleys or any of these purpose-built ski resorts where you're stepping out of your hotel, putting your skis on and off you go, yeah. forget it. It's not yeah. that place. It is not that place. Um, it is, well, fundamentally, it's a mountaineering town. Its origins are in, in mountaineering with the, you know, the the British coming and conquering most of the people. Well, that's funny. I've blurred, I've blurred my background, but I have my Chamonix picture yeah. behind me that has the, obviously the mounting and the ski in the winter and yeah. the summer yeah it's um well let's not go through the whole history but you know at today yeah there are five separate ski areas in the valley only one of which is linked to the other as you mentioned brevon fleur yeah yeah um but it's uh, when you live here you don't think anything of it um uh, but as i say if you're used to stepping out of your door onto your piste no nah. No, yeah. it's not. It's not that place. Um, yeah. it, it, each individual ski area is reasonably small. Um, yeah. It might be, uh, you know, a dozen lifts as opposed to, you know, hundreds um, or hundreds yeah. of wide, cruisy red runs and blue runs. No, yeah. it's not. It's not that place. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't. I wouldn't actually advise somebody looking for that to come here. Never, um, apart yeah. from a, you know, a change of scene at some point. What it is, as I say, is a town, um, uh, a, a year-round. This is what this is the main reason we, we we came to Chamonix. I did have experience of it before, um, but it's the fact it's a it's a town. It has yeah. life, or genuinely all year round. Well, I don't want to, I don't want to be rude about other ski areas uh, but they're not year round you know they've got some activity in the summer this is year round it's busier in the summer than it is in the winter yeah i saw yeah. some figures i i don't want to misquote the figures but i saw how much um uh the summer is compared to the winter it's pretty yeah. crazy isn't it yeah and I, and I often talk about the 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 inter seasons and, the, and the, the dip um of numbers between the seasons now in Particularly going from winter to summer, there's barely any dip. Yes, of course, it gets a bit quieter in uh, April um, as we get towards the end of the ski season. 
Um, but you know, but that's but just I, that's just. A tr- I think that's a, just the transition for every place, isn't it? The weather changes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, yeah. But uh, you know, going from winter to summer, the weather's going the right way. Um, I mean, I, I cycled yesterday. I rode bikes yesterday. Which is nuts at this time of year, but yeah. you know, it is it, when the sun's out, it is it is it is warm. It's cold in the shade, but in the sun, it's warm, um, and that continues. You know, a lot of people ski in the morning and maybe ride in the afternoon or hike in the afternoon, and then before you know it, you're in the summer. And, and May yeah. is a lovely time of year to be here. So is yeah. June, and then yeah. then then we're in summer um, uh, to, to the absolute peak, which is yeah. the end of August, the Alta Child du Mont Blanc. Uh, the, the you know one of the ultra marathons that is the one globally um, everyone wants to do everyone wants that t-shirt um, yeah. and it's it's huge it is yeah. huge I mean it's bigger than New Year uh, by yeah. by some margin um, and that continues on through September and October is a very pleasant time of year November yeah November that's uh, the weather's going the wrong way. Uh, it's, uh, it's not quite ski time, um, and it, you know it's getting colder. So that's quiet. November's quiet, but the rest of the year, yeah, we've we've got life. We've got um, we've got activity. There's all sorts going on. Do, um, do, you, do you think that what what's the what's the impression? Um, again, it always interests me. What what's the impression from a, a person that's the first time they've come to Chamonix and they're considering buying a property? What do you get as a general kind of feedback? Um, I think they're surprised how nice it is. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, everyone has great views, but you know, some of the views here are absolutely stunning. Um, yeah. You know, the town, the town itself is quaint. It's probably the wrong word, but um, it's it's a really lovely town centre. Um, yeah. And it's a it's a steep sided valley, so it's very dramatic. Um, you know, the views are. Uh, are pretty dramatic. Uh, there yeah. is a flip side to that, of course. Steep side of valley. Um, you know, we lose. I, the I was, the I was fam- yeah, I was familiar with the steepness of Chamonix uh, when I first came there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I arrived as a, I arrived as a good skier, but yeah, um, a, a lesson learned very quickly. I think, I, and I know what you mean about the, 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 the beauty of it. It's got some very jagged peaks, hasn't it? Rather than rolling. Yeah. Peaks. It's very beautiful. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, what we don't do enough as as residents is, is go up the mountain. Um, uh, you know, don't yeah. forget to look up. That's the uh, one yeah, of the yeah, checks. agreed. Uh, um, on on that, Andy, like for for people that are considering buying a property there, obviously you don't have that ski in ski out kind of like apartment. You walk down the stairs, you on the kids run and you can access pretty quickly to get up to the slopes does anyone everyone that's buying there is it do you think it's necessity a necessity to have a car um about getting around where where is kind of like the best place in terms of obviously you're not going to have that ski and ski out what, what we obviously said not to focus on that but if there was a location a real um, hot spot location where people want to be. Where where would you suggest that was? What's my budget? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Well, let's 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 do a couple. So let's start with like um, let's do like a nice two bedroom property. I think uh, simply you want to be in the town centre. Yeah, uh, and, and is is that possible? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, we're running out of potential for for new builds, certainly. Uh, Maybe I'll come back to that, but um, the, the vast, vast majority of our apartment buyers are focused on on being in the centre. Um, yeah. Access to obviously access to bars, restaurants, shops, um, and, and the life um, in and around um, the centre. Yeah. Um, there's a very good bus network which has uh, seen a lot of improvement for this season. They're adding a lot of routes, and the the, the routes are going further. It goes down to Serbos down the valley oh, now. Wow. Um, and, all, and all the way up, um, there's obviously the train as well. If you're going to buy wisely, you should think about access to um, to, to that network. Yeah. Um, if you take if you take the busy times, you know I'm not, I'm not going to give you glowing positives. There are there are some negatives, but it's not it's not perhaps what the re- reputation uh, is often uh, portrayed as. If you're on the, the west side of of Chamonix Centre, you are very close to the main bus terminal. Yeah. Um, where 
that, that's the hub for the entire network. Yeah. Um, so if you're close to there, you know, you, you've, you've got access to anywhere in the valley and easy access to anywhere in the valley. If yeah. you're on the other side, for example, um, and you're wanting to get the bus to, to the Grand Monte, to Argentière, yeah. Yeah. you know, at busy, busy times, that bus might be pretty full by the time yeah. it's left the, the, the town centre. Um, and yeah, I mean, absolute peaks at New Year. You see people at the bus stop further down the route just sort of waving at the driver as he waves at them, so, you know, <laughs> full and, and, and carrying on. A uh, bit of an exaggeration, but it's, it, you know, it can no, be. That, that's, that's really interesting from a buying process, isn't it? That kind of like that specifics in the location, even to be able yeah. to get onto the bus pretty, pretty accessibly rather than yeah. being in you compromise the budget a little bit, go further down the road, which I assume is a little bit cheaper, and then you just can't get on a bus and you can be waiting there probably an hour, I imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's never that bad. But um, uh, if, you, if you take, uh, you, you may well know the area, um, uh, Chamonix Sud. Chamonix yeah, Sud. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, southwest of the town centre, it was built uh, around 1980. Um, just over a thousand apartments there, you know, specifically built for holiday rentals by a, a number of fr large French rental agencies. Yeah. Um, and um, it, it was it was badly maintained. What, what yeah, it was, I remember that actually, maintained. yeah. You know, a few of the locals know, know it as the ghetto, um, <laughs> which, is, which, is, which is fine, because I, I ended up buying, make, make a little sort of pension portfolio out of the, some apartments there. And as long as everyone thought it was the ghetto, fine by me. Um, yeah. But but since about oh, 10, 12 years ago, it's seen a lot of investment. Um, and these apartments are being bought by individuals and, and renovated. Oh, my God, I've seen some that wouldn't look out of place in a 5 million euro chalet in terms of their wow. interiors. Genuinely, it's, yeah, people are spending a lot of money renovating these places. The whole square is about to be done. Point is, it's right by the main bus stop. It's got uh, several really quite nice restaurants and bars in the square. The view from there is stunning. Uh, yeah. It's got a supermarket. It's got ski hire shops. It's got the Agui de Midi. But the main point is it's got the bus stop. Um, and, and the Geneva airport transfers now come in to that same spot. So if you're coming up on the on a transfer, whether, whether minibus or one of the bigger buses like Blah Blah or Flix bus, yeah. Swiss tours, these guys coming up off yeah. the bus. You're right by your accommodation. It's perfect. It's convenient. Yeah. It's it's four minutes walk into the very centre of town. So it's got everything. So uh, what what would you what would you get for what would you what would you get um, bang for your buck there? What's the price per square meter? You're getting, you you're get? getting a. I mean, we've hit ten thousand euros a square meter now in Shamsud, which if people are listening to this and know Shamsud from ten years ago, they'll they'll, they'll drop their cup of tea. But um, uh, genuine growth there. It's the sweet spot for investment. Yeah, um, it's yeah. it's good value because it's always been a bit looked down on. Um, it, uh, so e easy math. So fifty square meters, five hundred thousand euros, pretty much. Yeah, but vast majority of the studios are one beds. Um, so classic one bed, twenty seven square meters. If it's in if it's in Great Nick now, you're you're, you're getting two hundred seventy five thousand for it. Uh, that's 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 pretty incredible though if you consider uh, so even so centrally located studio one bedroom roughly ten thousand euros a square meter in a place that is all year round i assume in that location because of the accessibility it's easy to rent it um, yeah. very very close to geneva all this stuff if you compare that with some other resorts around the world that's relatively cheap you know I think so. I think so. Um, it's it, it's particularly it's a pied à terre. You know, it's a, it's a bolt hole yeah. for you. Yeah. I mean, you go back to my the area when we first started coming to Chamonix. We, we bought um, with Matt actually and a couple of friends. We bought um, a two bed apartment in in the centre of Chamonix. Uh, yeah. And you know, pre nine eleven, you, you could literally rock up at the airport at the last minute and, and get on the plane and you know. We're, Booked the easy car from Geneva Airport. One of us went to get the car while the others got their bags. We, we'd be in, we'd be in the pub by half past ten, having having yeah. left work at a normal time. Yeah, it's 
that's that's the convenience of it. You're pretty much on motorway to the door. Yeah. Um, of course, the Mont Blanc tunnels here. The you know, the road's really good. Um, before they put more cameras in than they've got uh, these days, but you know, you can you can do the drive in 45 minutes, maybe a bit speeding. Um, but it, you know, very convenient. And and that yeah. that ski weekend concept, yeah. I think really really was born in Chamonix. I mean, ski weekend, the company that is based in Chamonix yeah. was based in yeah. Chamonix. That that's the convenience of it. Um, I need, even for a weekend, you know, an actual weekend, yeah. get Saturday and Sunday in, late night flight on a Sunday, all, all very easy. Um, of course, that's Andy, only just, a just, longer these just days. To, just to ask on that, so anyone that is listening, because we, uh, we definitely have people that have been looking in Chamonix, absolutely 100%, whether they yeah. can find what they're looking for, obviously, it, entirely up to them. If, for example, just um, hypothetically, uh, a, a property at 40, 30 square metres comes onto the market, in in roughly that price range, how how long does it last on the market for? How how quickly do people uh, be? Fairly often, it's not even making it to market. No way, really. Yeah. So uh, in, in that case, what would you advise? Would you advise people to kind of make an inquiry, sit on your database? If absolutely. that comes up, you've got to act fast. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, we we, we the, 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 our best chance of selling is straight away. Straight yeah. away, if we get a, a property that's well priced right, um, ticks a lot of the boxes, we will invariably sell it straight away. Wow. Um, particularly at the lower end, uh, budget-wise, up yeah. to up to a million, say. Um, yeah. Because I imagine this works on so many levels that people that have money, this is an easy investment for them, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of cash buyers out there. Uh, yeah. You know, mortgaging is a little bit tricky at the moment, although rapidly improving. Um, yeah. But yeah, cash buyers who can who can jump on something. Yeah, it's the best thing to do is to be in touch with 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 somebody that you trust, um, yeah. and 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 keep badgering us, keep badgering us. Uh, to so you know, I'm 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 looking, I'm looking, I, I'm ready to move. Yeah, and, and we do. You know, we, even at even at valuation stage, we're maybe giving a, a little nod to uh, to a hot buyer, saying that this might be coming up. Can't give you the details, obviously, but as soon as yeah. we're instructed formally, then you know we'll send it through to you. And and you know, a number of deals have been done that way. We la- we launched a two bed apartment um, uh, to eight nine five on on Friday, um, and we're finalising two asking price offers today that's um, brilliant yeah. it's it's central yeah. it's modern it's got yeah. all the toys yeah those those sort of things go quickly the higher end you know um say three million for five bed luxury chalet plus plus yeah um not quite so instant you know <laughs> Uh, no, but to be fair, that that works. Obviously, snow only being a portal, we can see that. Like the funnel to get to the the higher end buyers is obviously a lot harder than the funnel to get to someone that's going to spend three to five hundred thousand. It's a lot there harder to find, that's for sure. And there's yeah, there's quite yeah. a lot of option. So just to kind of segue into that, what what would you if if you saw someone that's looking for like a five bedroom, three to five million? Um, what kind of areas would you kind of best suggest? Obviously, that's that's depending a lot on their preferences. But at, from your advice, what's kind of like the best kind of investment or lifestyle approach in terms of accessibility? Proximity to town is, to said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Proximity to town to town is still still a factor. Uh, and, um, what what do you, sorry to interrupt you there, Andy. For Chamonix, what do you consider in terms of proximity to town? Are we talking like 500 meters a kilometer to because we we know that Chamonix Valley is the, the valley is spaced up to Latour. How far is it up to Latour? I don't even know. Well, it's 20 kilometers one end to 20, the other. Okay, 20 kilometers. So if, if we consider that the whole, how close do you think? I mean, the, classic, the classic is a 15 minute walk. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the first chalet we bought, that's the first thing we did. Uh, yeah. My wife to be at that time and I ambled into town to the very center of town. And it, it was, this is slightly nerdy, it was 14 minutes, 53 seconds, tick, okay. just. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's really important. And, and that has remained important to, to us uh, yeah. as owners um, throughout this time. Yeah. Um, beyond, beyond that, um, 
it becomes about the property more than anything else. Um, yeah. And, and the, the top areas that people look for um, are, in terms of close to town, Les Moussou and Les Pecs, on the, okay. the south-facing slopes above town, huge panoramic views, more yeah. sun in the winter than elsewhere. Quite a steep slope in many cases to get to your chalet. You've got to be fit, but you know that, that's that's probably the norm. Um, and then as you head towards um, uh, Les Pras, uh, the Flegere lift, yeah, yeah, yeah. they're quite constant in price. And again, similar area, Les Nantes, um, similar to Moussou, high up on the um, on the Mont Blanc facing south side, south facing yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. And then the Plaine Les Pras, uh, leading into Les Pras with a yeah. Flegere lift. Yeah. yeah. And then the classic um, traditional wealthy chalet area is Le Bois, uh, opposite the golf course, um, yeah, more know, yeah. yeah, mature, big trees, straight into the forest. But you are you wouldn't walk it. It's 45 minutes. Yeah, um, I remember. Like so within, within those chalets, are you talking about uh, are most of them new build, are most of them slightly older? Do a lot of them need renovation? Are they uh, renovated? Like what's the kind of, what's the thing that people are kind of after and how many of those are even available? Um, I'm going to tangent massively here. Um, the answer to that question is in planning. Uh, now that the the it's tight, the market is tight. I think it is everywhere, but particularly in Chamonix, the, 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 it's driven by a lack of stock, um, and, and particularly since COVID times, you know, we, we have the buyers, we have the demand, we just don't have the stock. When uh, when we're Andy, sorry, when we're talking about stock, are we talking about quality? Because I, I always get this from people. People talk about oh, there's a lot of stock. Are we talking about quality properties that people generally want, or or if something came on that was absolutely battered or a terrible interior, would that still be appealing for a buyer? Yeah, I'm talking about literally things to sell. Yeah, okay. You know, whether whether they're a rundown farmhouse or whether they're a brand new uh, spangly chalet, just yeah. simply a lack of of, of, of things to to sell, uh, made worse by the planning situation situation now so you, you fundamentally can't build over 200 square meters now um, the town hall yeah the, i read this the other day yeah yeah there was 300 square meters until the turn of the year it's now 200 square meters and that's 200 square meters internally or how, do, how yeah, does it yeah um yes habitable floor area fundamentally okay um uh, so it was 300. So you saw a lot of a lot of planning applications for 299 square meters. Um, beyond these numbers, um, there is a requirement to provide 25% by floor area of social housing. I, I heard this recently. I think we had a buyer that was going through that process and then was put off by the social housing. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's the way they are stopping larger chalets. Why they are stopping larger chalets, I don't know. I don't know. I, it's um, uh, I need to have a I need to have a beer with the mayor at some point and just sit down. <laughs> and say, what, what, what is this policy for? I, I don't understand. And not not of the main architects in the valley. What, what are you trying to achieve with this yeah. restriction? Yeah. Um, it, it, it fundamentally doesn't um, make sense. Um, yes, we need we need affordable housing. I mean, we're not we're not talking with all due respect, you know, a, a rough estate in Tottenham or something like that. We're talking about, um, you know, normal people being able to afford um, to live in, in, yeah. in a place like this. And it's across the board, you know, the same problems we have in, in Mosin, uh, no doubt in Leger, and, and now across the ski areas. It, yeah. It's become simply too expensive for, um, the, the, you know, people who are working in bars and restaurants or whatever it may be to afford yeah. to, to live here sensibly. So the town was trying to create that, but they're going about it the wrong way. But anyway, the knock-on is you're now not building over 200 square meters. You can extend. So, so what is this pushing the real the resale market into a better value? Is it, or is it pushed the prices yeah, of, of the resale market sky high and now because there's demand? Yeah, the, the demand is there. The demand is there. The the things to buy, the opportunities are not or very limited. Um, and simple supply and demand um, yeah. upgo the prices because 
there's just nothing out there. What we're seeing now is people, or have been since COVID really, is people willing to, to buy an existing chalet just to knock it down and build what they want. Yeah. Um, and that, that, there's a number of um, factors of that, you know, uh, energy rating, um, hot topic. Um, I've, I've said for a while, this will become pretty relevant or very relevant, and we're seeing it more than ever. Um, you can't, as you, as you probably know, under, under French law, you can't long-term rent anything with a, with a G rating. Yeah, uh, okay. Now, which will become F, which will become E. You've got to upgrade these properties to a, a higher level of thermal efficiency, which for some is a lot of money. Yeah. Uh, that, that, that classic, I don't know, 60s, 1960s chalet, probably electric radiator heating, the electric yeah. boiler, single glazed windows, paper thin roof, blah, blah, blah. Um, the upgrade works on that are substantial. Yeah. Um, and more than the uplift in value by by you know making uh, making the energy rating uh, of today's standard. So a real is, is, this, is, this kind of, is this process putting buyers off a little bit, or or are the sellers kind of hold, holding out, or are they kind of going, look, I understand that it's a bit it's a bit too much to do all these upgrades and stuff, and they're kind of reducing the price a little bit. How's it kind of working? It's. Um, it's definitely having an impact. Um, uh, much of it is the fear of the unknown. Yeah. Okay. Um, if, if you the 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 diagnostica, the um, what's the equivalent in the UK, the the HIC or the, you know, the the property report that is obligatory for sale, that will now include an estimation of the works that you need to do to bring it up to an energy rating that um, is 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 usable. Wow. Uh, and it can be quite scary you know, if it needs a new roof yeah. or you know it needs insulating on the outside of the building and the inside or the windows need changing or or you've got to retrofit um you know an, an air source heat pump with underfloor heating these are big chunks of money so it, it definitely is having an impact on the properties that don't meet the standard but that's that's a really interesting one, isn't it? As you go through the funnel of obviously from a new build point of view, uh, anything over 200 square meters, you have to do 25% social housing. Let's park that bus because no one wants to go through that process. Then you have the resale market that needs all these upgrades. So if you spend X amount of money, it will cost X amount of money in addition. So as you kind of go through the funnel, there must be some of the resale properties that have had all these upgrades it's a bit more easy. It's past the 200 square meters because it's a resale. These properties must be very appealing to people. Yeah, yeah. And um, we saw it. I was going to say that you know, absolute opposite of something with a very good energy rating, something with a renewable yeah. heat source, very well insulated, uh, you know, double or triple glazed, whatever it might be. Um, you know, hand, hands up. Matt and I got a valuation wrong recently because we undercooked the premium that someone we would pay, somebody would pay for what was a, I think a B rating. I mean, B in, in, a, in, in the Alps is, is quite rare. Um, yeah. I mean, a lot of really good properties are C, but to get a B is, is extraordinary. And, and the buyer snapped it up like that and, and, and paid, a, paid a higher price um, to have a thermally efficient modern chalet. So, you know, the, the middle ground is left where it is perhaps, but the, the top end is uh, is getting a premium, and, and the bottom end is is being hit a little bit. There's still yeah, but I assume a, a premium, but it saves a lot of time of money, and if you're not going to be there all the time, it's an easy purchase, isn't it? Yeah. What yeah. what what just out of, just before we kind of move on, what kind of price point are we looking in terms of uh, price per square meter and compared to the ten thousand euros for the two bedroom for something like that that is fully ready to go, doesn't need any work, etc. What time of what type of price are we looking price per square uh, meter? I'm not talking exceptional here, but if you're talking about a good quality four bed chalet uh, yeah. that, that's reasonably modern, um, where we're fourteen to fifteen thousand euros a square meter. And then the top end is twenty thousand. We're hitting wow. twenty thousand euros a square meter now, which is, which is yeah, quite quite a growth. Um, we should. It, it is quite a growth. It is quite a growth, but there's it's still a lot less than a lot of the bigger bigger resorts. Just to kind of put it into perspective, there was a 
uh, and this is miles away and a very, very, but in Japan, there's some properties in Hanazono, uh, which is a very, very new ski uh, area. I ski in, ski out at the park higher. Their price per square meter is $50,000. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, yeah. What and Chamonix is so established and so convenient. I, I'm surprised it's not higher, to be fair. So I think there's still growth to be able to come for any for investment. I think there's been an element of, um, of, of Chamonix growing as a, a as a place to be in the recent past. Uh, you think COVID has a, has had a positive or negative effect on people oh, wanting positive. to be in Chamonix? Oh, positive. positive, hugely. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've always thought, um, yeah, compared to Mijev, for example, that's our nearest um, uh, yeah. comparison at sort of higher level. Um, you know, we, we see we see market trends via our relationship with Knight Frank. You know, we see the research yep. reports across across the yep. resort. I mean, Majev um, uh, and Verbier um, were a lot of Geneva, Genevois money. You know, the the, the wealthy go to Majev. It's a very uh, very lovely um, resort, um, but it's uh, the, the skiing is is vast compared to Chamonix. It's a lot of, you know, reds and blues, big linked areas. I mean, I, yeah. I don't know the, the numbers off the top of my head, but it's a it's a bigger ski area and it's more focused around skiing. Um, whereas Chamonix isn't, but you've got the, 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 the more, how can I put it, the more established wealth where maybe the kids started skiing when they were two um, yeah. and are very, very good skiers. Yeah, uh, yeah, um, yeah. That, that that has been a more recent thing that we've had. As 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 Chamonix has upgraded itself at every level, you know, the high street, the high street is extraordinary. It's like it's like an old Bond Street of winter retailers. Um, yeah, oh, I see. Yeah. Including the old, old Bond Street type retailer, anyway. Um, but uh, it's it, it's glitzed itself up. But the the the, the higher end buyers have come with it. I'll tell you the the the, the ultra trail is is a good example of what's happened over the years. We the, the, I think it was the first year that it ran is just when we arrived. And my, my wife and I just sat down to a dirty great burger at um, uh, at uh, Maison, what is now Maison du Burger, you know, with the chips in it, you know, proper healthy, um, proper healthy big burger. And then the roads were cleared, and all these runners just ran past it. I mean, it was embarrassing for us. Sort of put a napkin over the burger, you know. Best of luck, whatever you're doing. Um, and that was the first ultra trail. And, and, and the other you know, rentals that followed were, you know, people were looking for a studio. They were looking for a bed. They just wanted somewhere yeah. to sleep whilst they do the ultra trail. But yeah. now, you know, we've got people coming from all over the planet to run the ultra trail, um, yeah. which is terrible environmentally, perhaps. Um, but they're they're booking they're booking the fanciest chalets for two weeks, uh, yeah. either side of the of the race itself. There might be yeah. a couple of runners in the group, but the rest of the family are there. You know, yeah. places that are, that some of our rentals stop with pools and you know, obviously jacuzzis, spas, saunas, all this sort of stuff. Yeah, that's where those runners. Uh, you know, that that's the the level of those runners these days. So yeah. everything is that's just an example, but that's everything has gone with it. And I think yeah. those really good skiers um, who who probably come for two weeks, book a mountain guide for the whole of the two weeks, and they're off doing God knows what, um, you know, up and over the mountain on the other side, ski touring here or whatever they may be doing. You know, that's that's the flavour of it. We didn't have those kind of wealthy buyers before. Um, you know, the five, I've got five million to spend. We might be able to find one or two chalets in the past whereas you go to Majef they'd have a choice of a dozen yeah um, so that you know the market has really evolved and yeah. um, there are some really very nice chalets here now um so we're perhaps catching up with uh, with the level of clientele that these other resorts have had for for a long time yeah yeah just um, just on that do you think that i mean this, this is a little bit of a, a side move here but do you think that um, obviously um, there was something posted the other day that it said it was 19 degrees in Chamonix Town and obviously we're on the 4th of February. Um, obviously, a lot of people are speaking about climate change, so we might as well address it. Um, do you think that in kind of the long term that Sh Chamonix, Chamonix probably 
has the infrastructure and the appeal because it's a summer resort to kind of like weather that storm and still have people wanting to buy Let, let's for example let's go to a massive extreme and assume that there's no snow for example do you think that chamonix would still be a re very uh, appealing yeah, place it'll go it'll go back to its roots of, of, of mountaineering yeah, uh, we, we, the, the the majority I, I can never remember it's eighty percent or ninety percent of the skiing is over two thousand meters. You often see stats of Chamonix at a thousand and thirty five meters. Well, yeah, the town is, yeah, um, but the skiing is a kilometer above it. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, the, yeah. Uh, there's some nursery slopes lower down. But, you know, you compare that to. Uh, well, you know, Morzine, Leger, uh, Megev, uh, Comblou, all these other areas that are mid-altitude resorts. Yeah. Skiing comes down to town um, and, and goes from there. And the top of the resorts are 2,000, 2,100, whereas yeah. we're, you know, we're, we're considerably beyond that. We need more yeah. snow because it's on rock, um, and generally. Uh, the Tour yeah. and Les Uches are onto grass, so you don't need as much depth. But... Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're pretty, I think we're pretty secure on that, on that snow front. And you see that, well, this is the second year on the trot that it's been reasonably warm um, and, and very rainy in the lead up to Christmas. Yeah. Um, you can see it by the, 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 the club jackets or the ski school jackets. You know, they're not, they're from other resorts. You know, other people are coming here because uh, yeah, we've, exactly. we've got skiing, you know, yeah. and, and, you, and you see that. The other side, of course, as I say, it's year round. We've talked about that, um, and and actually that brings more and more appeal. The thing we're seeing, starting to see now, are, are buyers from the south, as you're uh, along the coast, because it's too hot, consistently yeah. too hot down there. Um, you know, forty degrees, um, yeah. or I think it's more the overnight temperature. It's just not cooling down overnight. Yeah. Whereas that's the beauty of living in somewhere like this you know the temperature does we have lovely warm days but the temperature does drop overnight and it's comfortable yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You know, it's, uh, um, i think we'll, we'll be we'll be secure because of that um, yeah plus, but, but that's just just to kind of wrap that but that's not do, do, do you have a lot of conversation with people about it or is it not even a conversation that people consider they still kind of just go we want to be in chamonix just we still want the property yeah, I, I, I don't think it's brought up particularly for yeah. someone like here. Um, it, it is yeah. elsewhere. Because is. I, I get the impression that I think a lot of the, the a lot of the buyers that are interested, I think they're always going to buy in the mountains. I mean, we're called snow only. I think we might be mountain only eventually. But I think that people still want to buy in the mountains. I think it's the people that are outside that that are having all the conversations about it. But the mountains is still a beautiful place to be regardless, I think. And Chamonix especially. It's Germany especially. Yes. Um, let me ask you a few kind of quick fire questions, Annie, because we've been, you and I have been chatting. I think we could probably chat for a few days, to be fair. Um, uh, what do you say to people that 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 um, that say that Chamonix is a very, a more challenging place to ski than anywhere else? Uh, just go, yes. Yes. Do you think it, it is? is? It is. It is. It is. Uh, um, I, I tell you what it is. Uh, classic cliche. The, the blues in Chamonix are reds elsewhere. Yeah. Reds yeah. in Chamonix are blacks elsewhere. And that, I don't know if, it's terrible, but you know, you're on the chair, like the red on, you see somebody head off on the blue, and they're, you know, they start here thinking, oh, it's a nice blue, and then, oh, hang about. Um, and it's just a trail of waste of people sliding all over the place on their back. Is, is, so that, is, that, is that pretty much known within Chamonix that that is the case? Is it yeah, the case? Yeah, uh, uh, there's two sides, yes. That bit about the pistes, yes. The rating of the pistes is, I think, is different in Chamonix um, than it is elsewhere. But it's it's not somewhere to be afraid of if you're uh, an in, a lower intermediate skier. You know, the, the tour is perfect. Why yeah, the tour, the tour is, it gets a little bit windy up there, but it's 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 perfect yeah. as a kind of ski place. Yeah. Yeah. Zouche is is great for for blues blues and and and. Yeah, but they're normally normally rated those ones, uh, both the Tour and Les Uches. Um But yeah, you, you, you try the Bouchard Red in Grand Montagne; it's pretty gnarly. <laughs> in, yeah. 
places. Um, I mean, and, there's and definitely been Brunel. some scenarios in Chamonix where I, I remember I, I actually was telling a story to someone yesterday that um, I can't remember where it was, a big black run in the Grand Monte, and I saw a guy in a mogul pretty much sitting in it and it seemed higher than he was. And I'm thinking, you've got such a long way to get down. <laughs> <laughs> Poor thing. That Especially just, one that of those yeah, probably thought it would be okay, and then just was thinking, "What am I doing here?" But yeah, I always, I always think that Shaman is it's it's hard work on the legs sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and and, and the flip side to that is, uh, you know, it, it, I'm not I'm not a great skier, trust me, I'm pretty awful, uh, relatively. Um, and and yeah, it's particularly with my, I've got two sons, uh, um, sixteen and eighteen. You know, if we go to other places, they find it a bit boring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. skiing. Yeah. Skied, I've done it. Um, that's unfair as well, but you know, I think the skiing is interesting. It is uh, it's built around off piste. There's masses and masses of easily accessible off piste, uh, particularly at Grand Monte. Uh, yeah. There might be two sort of lifts, but the whole of the bowl in between is is easily yeah. accessible and, and relatively safe. Not on the glacier, but relatively safe skiing. Um, um, but yeah, I agree. Um, the, just a quick one. Just a quick one. Well, it's come into my head. Um, the, the lift at Flegere, I know, got upgraded a few years ago. Would it be yeah. more than a few years ago now? How, yeah. How's that How's that dealt with the queue there? Is it is it pretty easy to get up now? Oh, well, it's just um, quite a absolute, queue. absolute world of difference. You're oh, talking about from the from the from the, from the from the bottom of the valley up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I remember I remember going there in the morning and just thinking this queue is going to take forever. No, it's it, the capacity is way higher. Um, there was a queue um, the other day. Um, it was a, basically the first weekend of perfect conditions. So it snowed, okay. so, sun was out, other resorts weren't open. So the world and his wife were coming here. And I yeah. think that was taking 20 minutes to get up. Um, yeah. So it's it's a world apart from what it was. And then when you're up there, the index made a yeah. massive yeah. difference, six man yeah. chair. So where, where, would, where, would you, where would you ski in Chamonix if you had a day? Uh, I really like Bremont oh, Flegere. Yeah. No, I'm not going to give you a day, half a day, because then you might just say, I'll just move around there. Where, it's, where it, you it's rare that I ski more than half a day, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Bremont Flegere, yeah, generally. Yeah. Um, yeah. It just, Lovely place. It's on the sunny side. But, you know, If you know where you're going, there's, if you've got the conditions, there's loads of off-piste up there. It's just Yeah, if you know open. where you're going, it's all good, isn't yeah. it? The rest of the time, um, yeah, with the, with, the, with, the, with the guys, I guess, Head towards Grand Monte, just the snow, north facing, high, stays yeah. in you know, stays in better condition for longer. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. The, the, the pass, I mean, the pass, um, the Mont Blanc Unlimited pass covers covers Courmayeur, uh, covers Majeve, covers Saint Gervais, yeah. covers Pontamine. Pontamine is a really nice place to go to. It's a little bit different, great with a family, um, yeah. and Verbier for several days. Um, you know. You've got a you've got a real variety on the pass, and we do use it. You know, we're we're yeah. we're the boys for mainly lunch um, in Cormier um, a couple of weeks ago. It's great. It's great to go to different places. Um, yeah, yeah, you know, agreed, so. agreed, agreed. Um, just a quick, few quick fire ones. Um, I used to love the side burger in in the side bar, and that was a long time ago. I think that was pre being burnt down. Uh, what's what's the best place to what's the be, your recommendation for the best place to grab a bite to eat? Uh, I, I, if I'm going to be honest, I'm going to say the kebab shop opposite our uh, office. That's perfect. I'm, the kebab shop. No, what about Apre, what about Apre ski? Where's people going for Apre ski? Yeah, I'm in that kebab shop place too often. You can probably tell. Um, I mean, still still Um okay. You've got the you've got the triangle of uh, Mou, uh, Elevation, bonjour, uh, and uh, sorry, just... oh, not supposed to. Um, elevation, Chambonneuf, and Mou, right opposite the train station. I mean, Chambonneuf still kicks off every afternoon with the band. Yeah. You've got to be in there early doors. Um, brilliant. The other the other place is the Folie Douce. Um, yeah. Uh, which is uh, you've got a great outbreak ski. That's more sort of sit there and watch people do weird things, um, dance. The, 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 the folly douche. That is that the one that's in the hotel. Yeah, it was Club Med. It used oh, to be Club yeah. Med for years and years, and then the folly douche group took it over, totally renovated it, 
Um, it's 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 an amazing place. But I think if you want that après ski, you know, band playing, beers everywhere, it's sure enough. Perfect, perfect. And and I know I'd ask you the question, and um, so I'll ask you. Um, any any uh, anything that you can tell us that probably no one knows about in Chamonix? Some hidden gems, information? Uh, no. Uh, I'll tell you what, the, the thing, I think the thing about Chamonix is, as I say, I keep coming back to the fact it's a town. There are normal things to do here. It's not yeah. about, you know, uh, tricky skiing or, uh, you know, chucking yourself off the mountain on a parapont or, uh, yeah. you know, the mountain biking steep. It's not about that. It's, it is a town. And one of the things... Uh, particularly with the family and, and, and friends that we love doing is um, going up. There are a number of refuges, uh, mountain huts that are easily accessible from the from from town. Um, the Chalet du Glacier, uh, the Bosson Glacier. I mean, it's pretty stunning there. Just a short walk. That was up where there. the snow park used to be. Uh, Bosson, yeah. I mean, yeah, yeah. that doesn't run as a ski lift anymore. But I mean, it's a, it's a comedy two man old very slow lift but you, you know you take that up and then there's a short walk to the bouvette um with a, a terrace amazing view over the town the glacier you know there's yeah. that there's the cascade du Dar, there's another lovely refuge there the refuge yeah. cerro uh, the refuge of chapeau these are the things that i think too many people don't experience because they don't know about it yeah. um but i love you know really nice walk the food's great so these huts are some of them haven't got electricity um yeah. or you know, normal water they're relying on springs and 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 you know power sources uh i, I just love to love to do that sort of thing the, the normal the normal yeah. uh, now kind of thing yeah i think it, the information you gave also about the ultra marathons and stuff like that the the, the activities that must go on in the summer i bet are super appealing at the moment yeah yeah, there's a lot. Um, I, if you take the summer, it's, it really begin well, both running events, but the Mont Blanc Marathon, well, it's now a week uh, with all the events around that. So that's yeah. towards the end of June through to the Ultra Trail, which is last week of August, sometimes sort of depending on dates going into September. They are huge. Uh, there's, there's various music festivals, Cosmo Jazz, lots of smaller things. My favourite, I think, is the World Climbing Championships. Uh, okay. which is usually uh, over Bastille Day. So 13th, 14th of July, that is just a great atmosphere, lots going on. The actual climbing itself is jaw-dropping. The, the speed climbing is it's like running speed up. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's great. It's great. It's not a big event. It's just great to be here at that time. You usually got a, um, a, a concert at the end of it. Um, yeah. Which is, uh, no, it's a, good, it's, it's a good time to be here. Andy, um, thank you so much for your time. I think we'll kind of wrap it up there. You and I have been chatting for ages. Um, I think uh, I'll put some links in below to contact you for any information. So I think that the good takeaway is that we learned a lot about the the larger chalets and the best locations for kind of like a, a, a one-bedroom chalet from you. Um, we'll put people in touch, but I really appreciate your time. We're putting all the contacts below um, for people to contact you. But Andy, loved chatting to you. Love yeah. to hear all about Chamonix once again. I love the place, um, and I will speak to you again soon. One thing you didn't ask me is why has my face gone so red? I don't know. Why has your face gone so red? Because <laughs> it's so, it's because it's Surely so. The camera. Surely the camera must be. <laughs> we'll do some. We'll do some strategic editing. All right, Andy. <laughs> take care, buddy. Cheers. See ya. Cheers. Bye bye.